Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Jackass Forever. First, I want to thank my friend, Justin. Uh, a little bit of backstory. I, some, by some miracle, they opened up a weed store, dispensary, whatever you want to call it, within walking distance of my house, my apartment. I could drive there in less than two minutes, maybe. Like, it's that close. So I went and um, got some Skittles, medicated Skittles, edibles. Getting regular weed is not an issue for me these days, but they have that there, too. You know, it's like Shangri-La, whatever, just almost a dream come true, in a sense. You live in New York, and you grow up in the streets, in the cold, and there's nowhere to go, and you're smoking weed or whatever, and just a day and age where it's legal in New York. In any case, I'm doing a test, and I'm take. I took one. I wanted to see the benefits of maybe um, sleep a sleep aid because edibles for me really help with sleep issues I have. So in that vein, I just upped it, and I did one. I, you know, alone, then I did two Skittles. You know, there's a milligrams on it, so you get the idea. Anyway, this is a Jackass Forever video, right? Anyway, so I was talking to my friend. He's like, oh, you should watch something funny. And I'm like, oh, didn't a Jackass movie come out? So, there you go. Now let's get to the movie. I am on, like, a real buzz. I'm on the edibles besides smoking and everything else, and I'm watching Jackass Forever. And just to make a long story short, if you don't want to go through a whole thing, I had a ball. I laughed so hard, I cried. Tears would come out of my eyes. I had to stop it. That could have to do with a lot of things. But in, in just, um, I'm a fan from the beginning. And when I say the beginning, I think by the time I was like seven years old, and yes, I'm older than Jackass, so what I'm trying to say is I think all little children and young kids are jackasses and i think that's one of the beauties of a uh, this type of show movie is you see yourself in this uh you, maybe boys more than girls or i think this movie has the first female cast member technically but you're just in you know such a catch because you can see yourself doing these stupid things uh, I'll mention one thing since I'm just blabbing, not even talking much about the movie. Uh, we had a friend, Philip, uh, and we put tinfoil around him like a you know, like a robot and sprayed it with Lysol and set it on fire. <laughs> and there's a delayed reaction to it. It was one of the funniest things that I've ever witnessed in my life, but these type of things you do as a kid, and this is just one little thing, right? And we all have them. But the show came out in, I think, 2000. Big fan, you know, just loved the zaniness of it. When the movies came out, my fiance, who passed away, um, we were enjoying the first one until they started messing with shit. Like, real human shit. And then she was done. Didn't watch them, never watch them again. And I think that's the balance of this. There are things that happen that are so funny... But there was things that were just so gross, and it's that balance of hitting these certain emotions that they're purposely going for. And I think it's a good balance. Is it the best of them all? I don't know. Um, when I look at the you know wide breadth of um, content from Jackass over the years, uh, I would say it's up there. You know, if you're not considering, like, you know, what they did in season fucking two of Jackass on MTV or whatever. But in the, as the movies go, I've enjoyed them all. Even the grandpa one, uh, spin off, whatever you want to call it. And they do a little thing like that here. There's so many crazy things they do. It just, you know, boggles the mind. Like, how hey, you can even bother with it. I do like the Johnny Knoxville aftertake or, you know, his coming away from this is, you know, it's his, well, they say it's the last, right? He says it's his last. There's only so many concussions you can take. 
And I think that's maybe why they put a couple of new cast members in this. So you'll see some new cast members here and there. Uh, they should use the, um, I wish I knew the name. Like, if I get prepared for these fucking things, they should have used, um, um, let's see. Wow. I should definitely prepare for this. Rachel Wolfson. So, you got a new blood, and you obviously, I guess, have to, if not pass on the torch directorially, because Jeff Tremaine and the, all the cast members are back. Except there's a funny thing with a couple of scenes, you kind of recognize somebody who's uh, Ben Majera, and there's some dispute legally, and they had to take him out of the film before it finished filming. Okay. But... You have to pass the torch on, right? I mean, how many broken bones can you get? Guy burning their hands, break a rib, collarbone broken. It, it, it gets insane. And it's funny, right? We're just laughing at it. And again, it's the balance of things that are just really funny, really, oh my God, disgusting, and outrageously just, like, it just doesn't make sense. They have this, um, the... The woman who joins the cast do the scorpion Botox scene, and I'm just like, you gotta be kidding me. So you got strange creatures, besides just outrageously funny behind the scenes stuff, because the movie is like pranks and stunts, if you're not, if you're new to the Jackass world. Pranks and stunts, but it is connected by the behind the scenes camera stuff, so you might get somebody who just decides to taser one of their friends next to him or hit him in the balls, which is what the old gag was. And, um, so that's the connective tissue that puts this movie together. It's just funny, outrageous stuff. And I kind of like the unexpecting stuff, like the guy going to get, um, a coffee and the, uh, big air pressured explosion pushes this fist out or something and it hits the guy in the face. <laughs> They knock the guy out in, the, in one of the other ones, and they do a couple of those here. Just outrageous stuff, and you just l keep laughing. But the movie opens up with a homage to, like, Godzilla or Kaiju or big monster things, and um, <laughs> what, they do, what they do is they got this creature, you know, tolls buildings, destroying things, and the cast of Jackass is trying to escape the, you know, the calamity. So that's how, you know, because they have a little theme on there, how they open their movies, and they're always good. But what makes this insane is, because they, they, they do something genius here. As it's filming, and you know what's going on, because I'm, I'm burying the lead, there's cuts to behind the scenes of what they're filming. So you have Pontius naked, lying on his back and they build a set over his cock his penis and they dress his penis up as the monster <laughs> so they puppet his penis destroying everything and they're cutting to like real life stunts and people get hurt in this thing yeah it might have been a you know a superimposed you know make it look big type thing and you know, you got real people filming, but those stunts are insane. They show some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Steve-O tossing a potty, port a potty, and those old shit all over. And more than once, the fucking cameraman is vomiting. And it gets that way here and there. It's just... It's definitely something that's going to hit all those points and going to make you confused as... Like my fiance was of how much fun you can have and how much you can live. And then on, on a dime in a split second, you're just like, oh my God, I'm disgusted now. <laughs> and is that the fun of it? Is that a, um, you know, and it's also the unexpected with some guests. So you got this guy, uh, one of the new cast members, I guess, brings his father or ex-con guy. And they do um like a spider test. It's just. And the real emotion, the real shock of things is part of the fun, too. 
So the candid camera angle, you know, secret cameras going around, but also the what we're doing is not really what we're doing thing. So yeah, you might be going in expecting to get uh, shocked from your chair, but they shut the lights off and there's a cobra running around. Oh, well, that's what you think. And then you think you get out because they have one door that's open and it leads to oil slick room with pots and pans hanging from <laughs> everywhere. It's just fucking. Oh, what a fresh air, fresh air to just laugh for a while. Um, stoned on fucking edibles and regular fun romp. There's so many insane things to go with. They get Wee Man. <laughs> And they do like a callback to one of the old skits they used to do in the, you know, Summoners of the Dead thing. And Wee Man just strapped to the ground and they put uh, raw meat on it. He's in a bikini, like a, just a Speedo bottoms. He's strapped and he can't move in. They put raw meat on his cock or around his cock and he let out a fucking, just a, it looks like a vicious a vulture. And it's a buzzard. It's just insane as it's just chomping away uh, and it uh, escalates right so they have a dare of their own rhythm by this time they know what they're doing and sometimes you're lulled into these little things and then bam there's a big surprise but these things like strapping them down are set up and they, you're just going what the fuck are they doing another one like that which might be one of my favorite is um He's been in the show, I guess they've all been in the show for so long, but uh, they've got, um, <laughs> they got this guy trapped, strapped to the chair, and he thinks it's going to be one thing, and it's another, so it starts as um, <laughs> the lie detector test, <laughs> and they got him strapped in, and every time he tells a lie, he gets shot. He's got like a shot collar on. <laughs> That's how it starts. So Johnny Knoxville's got Danger Aaron. He's in the chair. What's your name? He passes. You know, are you allergic to bees? And this is the great <laughs> psychological, um, you know, attack because now he's strapped in. He's allergic to bees. He says yes. The doctors say he's got doctor's notes, but they keep shocking him. So he comes over. Johnny Knoxville starts pouring honey on him and stuff and he starts panicking because he, he he knows what's coming cool he thinks he does because you know he's letting the room's gonna fill up with bees right and he's really fucking allergic so you 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 know it's a little deceptive what's going on he's really panicking he's gets scared and it's not bees it's a bear a fucking bear, and it's one of the most gripping, insane seasons. The bear comes up, and they put salmon <laughs> in his crotch, in his pants, like, it's fucking insane. And then when the fucking bear <laughs> is, like, done, there's that moment where the train is going to come out. Holy shit. So that... Oh, they have to keep up in this and being more deceptive because everybody knows what's going on. There's another one where they go into a room and right away people are like, alright, what the fuck is this? So, these type of things where you're making up a thing where you got them strapped and it's a lie detector test. Okay, what's really going on here? Alright, we're going to pour honey on you and salmon. And you're gonna, we're going to let bees go because he's really... No, it's a fucking bear. It is insane. It's hard to even convey the terror and the sheer insanity. Everything, you can see just, it's all there on their faces and their reactions, the people around them. And like I said, they will cut to, you know, what's going on behind the, behind the scenes. This is, it's just, you, you almost know that somewhere that this could be death. I once watched a, a video, or maybe by accident, I'm not sure why I caught it, but there's a thing with a bear trainer, and he's doing a bear thing, and the bear gets up on its hind legs, and there's another guy there, and the bear just 
reaches for the other guy, rips his throat, bites his throat out, and the guy stumbles around. You find out eventually die. These are animals, you know, even a dog that you love could just flip on you, though it's rare, but he's strapped to a chair. He's got electric collar on, lie test, and then as he's going through the thing, he starts pouring honey on him, and he knows something's wrong. Like, what are you doing? What's going on? And then it's fucking a bear, not bees. It's just terrifying. Then they got this monster MMA guy. This is the same guy, by the way, Aaron. The cup test. And this guy who hits harder than anybody on the planet, or it has a record for, you know, hitting the hardest. What's his fucking name? Shit. Um, MMA guy. Uh, Francis Naganu. Just holds off. Okay, so Danger Aaron's standing there naked except for tidy whities and he has the cup on that protects you. And the guy just fucking right uppercut to his balls and I don't know how this movie was ever filmed. Like, it's just... And he, you find that at the end of the movie, he dents the cup. And it's so sophomoric nonsense bullshit that, you know... It gets to the point where you're wondering like how you, you can see that people are mad. They're scared, mad, terrified, um, embarrassed. And they got this guy. He's been here forever, the big heavy guy. And they're getting ready to do a stunt, and he shits his pants. <laughs> He's in this skin-tight silver spaceman suit, getting ready to do something. I guess he thought maybe he let loose a fart, a fart or something, but <laughs> he's just his pants, and the cameraman starts puking. It's just insanity. And plus, the film is shot during the pandemic. It was one of those movies trying to bridge the gap between making a movie and... Look, if you're filming a movie in two to fucking five days, and it's costing you $10 million and you make $80 million, you guys are geniuses. So, besides the bone-breaking insanity there are genuine funny parts in this movie but you've got to get through it it's a chore it, it all the jackass movies have always been a chore you'll never get the funny light-hearted stuff all in one chunk in one clean pretty thing it just doesn't happen so you've got to sit through t- cringe panic terrifying moments where it's bugs it's fucking animals It's sheer pain and um, just insanity. They got this huge conveyor belt going God knows how fast. And it's called the marching band. And the band comes out. They're all fucking horrible. And they've got to, as they come around their little marching band thing, each one has got to step on the the conveyor belt, the, the, the thing. And it happens so fast, it's so violent, they get shot off, that it's like two of them are unconscious, the blood coming, there's blood everywhere. It's just insanity. And the one where they have a special guest, it's a bike thing, uh, but you know what's coming. Those things are pretty cool, too. Uh, there's two big hands, like big five-foot thing hands, and you're on his bikes, and whoever pedals the fastest can make the other person get hit with this huge hand and slapped into the water. So it's a contest. But right away, Knoxville, part of the thing is, things just happen for no reason, by accident. So for right, right away, before the game starts, <laughs> he knocks Steve Owen to the water. Bam! Anyway, the other guy gets knocked and he's like, you can tell he's in shock. He doesn't know what the fuck is going on. Oh my god. Such sophomoric bullshit humor. But man, it gets me sometimes. But like I said, you gotta find it between, you know, excrement and horse cum and pig cum. <laughs> like, it's just insanity. And it's so much fun. <laughs> they got the dumb dumb test. So <laughs> they're all standing there in the tiny whiteies, and he's got these big traps in front of him that has a big hand on it. Uh, not five foot tall, but this time a hand hand. And 
if you fail the, the question, you whatever, the hand comes up and slaps you in the nuts. Hits you in the nuts. And I'm talking death-defying speed, like, cringing, like, shock. And of course, before it even goes to do anything, <laughs> Tiny Knuckles hits the button by quote unquote accident. <laughs> and you can see it's fucking real. It's painful. These are bruises. And this is fucking nut, nutty thing. You think it's, it's just how it starts off silly. So it's called a vomitron. They get on this little circle thing that you have at the schoolyard and it spins around. So they, the, the the thing is they're gonna drink milk, spin on it, and everybody throws up. Right? Yeah, funny. So they're doing it, and it's going fast, and ah, the funny uh, throwing up. It's they're going so fast they one of them can't even drink the milk. And then it, you think it's it ends, but no. The army comes in, explosions start going off, <laughs> and everybody's attacked by paintball gun and it's you sit terrified because you see the you see the damage done with these things people take their shirts off and there are <laughs> dozens of purple bruises <laughs> steve gets hit in the dick <laughs> and i think he ruptures like one of his nuts or something Oh man, funny stuff. Just funny. And yes, you're gonna be disgusted. You're gonna be fuck it's gonna be vile. It's gonna be fucking gross. But you're gonna laugh your ass off and you know, sometimes that's what we need. So thanks again, Justin. Like I said, I was doing my test with my edibles and I'm like, oh, I'm on four of them now and I'm feeling it. So nine oh four my limit, my weight. And oh, I should watch something funny. Holy shit, Jack is forever. And there's so many stunts in it, you know, it's just crazy. I mentioned some that are just, just kind of, like, you gotta be crazy. And I think we were all crazy at some point in our life. We all have been jackasses. We know the concept that sticks with you. Like, psychologically, you could feel it. And it's just a weird thing. Just going, you know, I, you know some of the things I've done, I'm lucky to be alive. Um, you know, uh, how close you come to, uh, repeating something and where, where mistakes, like how close are you to a mistake? Uh, in one of the other movies, they show John Knoxville doing this cannon thing where he shot up into the air. They do it, they do it again in this one where he's got wings. It goes well, but they show when the explosion goes off and the rocket goes into the air, a big hole, the size of a softball, you know, a size of a small dish blast out of the side like one of its fucking pistons or whatever and like it's nine inches away from Johnny Knoxville's chest so you're waiting for that one thing people's fucking tailbones breaking in the other one it's just your nerves are shot your interest is peaked you're disgusted you're laughing so hard you're crying what a shit show in that sense they don't disappoint. Uh, I mean, if you just want to just be fucking shocked and really um, get a different perspective on what is funny, what's not, and how far they go, it's just, it's something to watch. Uh, I totally recommend these things. You know, it could open your eyes to some insanity. Just, you know locking people in a room but they think there's a rattlesnake oh poison by the way because they set it up you know here's the poisonous one it can kill you this and that and they purposely like in the dark they go in and they zap the guy or give him like a bite and he thinks he's bit <laughs> and he gets to the open door he runs through hit bonk because he's hanging from the ceiling of like iron pots <laughs> You have the B test, so they put the queen B, and they strap it to Steve O's cock, and all they let the all the other bees out, and all the other bees all they want to go is to the queen. 
so he's naked there. <laughs> yeah, just insanity. Just you think what the fuck are they gonna do? They got this um uh <laughs> the electric dance. So they got a guy at the piano, a guest, I guess. Uh, um, and they have this dance they do, but the floor is electrified. And they got like bare feet and they got <laughs> like metal canes. But this poor guest, they, they bring his little bench because you know he's got the tuxedo and. He's sitting on that little bench they sit on and playing the piano and they fucking get him. Get him bad like three times. And you just, you can't, you have to pause it because the tears are coming out of your eyes. So funny. They're trying to do this Charleston, like these dances and blah, 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 all these sparks are going off. Uh, oh. So the guest star was like, you know, you to go to the director, get on that fucking thing. Because <laughs> he can't believe how much, it, <laughs> how much it hurts. <laughs> so the director gets on it, and you can see the fucking shock. The fucking shock and pain on his face when he realizes how much it fucking hurts. And like I said, the connective tissue for this is insane gags and stunts and profanity and ludicrous nonsense. Is connected with behind the scenes real reactions and shock and laughing and oh, just funny, funny shit. And again, you're gonna be there's a part you're terrified when that bear is on him. And they do the fucking uh bull thing again. And this is where you know Johnny Knoxville's done because the bear, the bull hits him. He's rushed to the hospital, like, he's just, he's just like unconscious, doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Oh, man. And there's some slippery slide shit, you know, this is a, an hour and 40 minutes or so of insanity. Insanity. It's directed by Jeff Tremaine, um, you know, Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O, Chris Pontius, Dave England, Wee Man, Danger Aaron, Preston. Preston was the big heavy guy who shit his pants. <laughs> Shit, his suit, you know. He's like I said, he's in his silver fucking get up to do some skit thing. <laughs> oh, and the people who have to film this shit who are vomiting and just you don't know what the fuck's coming and who it's coming from. It's one of those things, right? You're on the team, you're getting shocked, you know, and the other one they they're taking a nap in the car and they just unload like Bushels of bees into the car. <laughs> Lock it and close it. <laughs> and you can see the real anger and the pain and the desperation. Just get me the fuck out of here. Get me out of here. <laughs> and then you see them go from pleading terror to like, look, I'm going to fucking beat the shit out of you. <laughs> oh my god. Jackass forever, you know. Thank you for this nonsense. It just fun, you know, and I could have put on some, you know, classic comedy. But I think sometimes you need it. You need to just sit through this vile, disgusting, you know, puke inducing nonsense, but get ready because you're gonna be fucking laughing your ass off. And then stupid shit like flattening Chris Pontius's penis so they can play paddle ball. <laughs> yeah, right? This is jackass. You know it was you at some point in your life, younger. You know, just nonsense. And yeah, probably boys and to the most extent. Because girls are not that dumb. <laughs> oh, dude. They did the fucking mime thing where, um,. They can't fucking say a word or speak or yell. And this chick fucking puts a tongue on this taser. I mean, you just, you're waiting for, you know you're going to flip out. You know your body's going to convulse. You're going to be connected to what's going on. And that's part of the charm of these things. I mean, 
let's even go back to the comedy of like Charlie Chaplin and the Three Stooges and you know wacky stuff this is today's day and age and I think this movie kind of really puts a light on will there be a new generation you know if Johnny Knoxville's just a ringleader which would be fine I mean come on even in football and sports right your day is done your injury it's not worth it no more you got paid a shitload of money and I guess that's where, where would it go from here do you get this new generation and just you know um how dare you say mentoring? You know, I just don't know. But it was good. All in all, I really liked it. Had so much fun. I'm crying through this in, this podcast. Just fun. But yes, gross, irreverent, insulting. I mean, it, it's everything. But to connect with people's faces and their terror and their pleading and their... Oh, it's just insane. The spider test. They, they got these two um, bubble helmets connected with a long tube. And they said one of them is the ex convict father of the guy. They're strapped to the chairs. And it's connected by a tube and they drop a fucking spider in it. And they're, they're blowing it back and forth. It's. And you, you're like. So many emotions. Your adrenaline's going. You're, you're scared. Your anticipation. And you're just laughing. What a fine line between, like, crying, laughing, and it's just a, I think it's a great experiment, and if this is the fourth one, fifth one, give me the outtakes and call it 4.5, whatever the fuck they're doing, I get it, just love, I just love watching them. I don't know if you consider it, like, your comedy you go to every year, if you're, like, if you're doing the Wedding Crasher or some comedy that's your favorite, you know, whatever. I don't know, I get, it's just, it, and it's exhausting too. It physically takes a toll on you, watching them. So, I won't ramble anymore. Jack is forever. Yes, I laughed, I cried, I was disgusted, insulted, and grossed out. And in the end, I wouldn't have it any other way. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.